Thank you for joining the Chance and Life program presented to you by Chance and International. Provide fair finance for equal access to education. We hope this discussion will give you a great tool that will help you to succeed in your academic journey. Now, let's dive in. Thank you so much for taking your time and join this conversation. Today we are going to discuss on how you can effectively manage time with online learning and it's a great pleasure to welcome the, the guest of today who is Stanley Mukasa. Stanley is a business and entrepreneurship with more than seven years in the education sector. He has worked in the top higher institutions in Africa including Davis College and the African Leadership University. He has experience in the design and delivery of entrepreneurship programs. Presently, Stanley leads the entrepreneurship team and the student venture program at LU Rwanda. And besides being a full-time employee at the African Leadership University, Stanley is also a student. He's a student with experience in higher education online learning. Actually, he's pursuing a PhD at the at Swiss Management Center University, a 100% online program. Thank you so much, Stanley, for accepting our invitation. Welcome to this conversation, and it's a great pleasure having you. Thank you very much uh, for the warm welcome. I'm really excited to be part of this conversation. Uh, it's a humbling moment for me to be able to share some of uh, my experiences with uh, other students who uh, you know are going through the same experience of online learning adaptation so uh, it's a it's a very great pleasure for me thank you stanley so uh, i would like to know how would you define a good time manager so uh, a good time manager to me is somebody who is able to first of all understand all the tasks they have to accomplish prioritize them based on levels of importance, uh, basically, um, you know, to affect time if they understand their energy levels and appreciate what sparks that. So to get to a definition, time management is about deciding what tasks you want to accomplish and when to accomplish them. Thank you so much. Uh, so you you are saying it's time management is to know what tasks what has to accomplish and when to accomplish it and we uh, we know that you are currently pursuing your PhD but you also have a full-time job at, at LU and I, uh, I would like to know how are you able to manage your time and still be effective in these two uh, in these two things thank you very much for that question so it's a mindset question I treat both of them as serious jobs. Studying is as equally uh, is an equally paying job as my full time job at ALU. So I am able to manage my time between school and work because I respect my job the same way I respect my studies. I need to do my job very well so that I can pay my tuition, and I pay my tuition through my job. So not having time to do both my jobs will be an excellent or I, every day I keep learning how to set priorities for my job and school. And I also need to do a good job every morning for my work, Monday to Friday. And I also, and I, I also need to rest enough for me to be able to take care of myself. So I always divide my personal time between study, work, and taking care of myself. There are three things there, mm -hmm. study, work, and taking care of myself. If you were given eight, eight, 18 hours in a day, do you think you will be able to balance being a student and an employee better? Yes, again, uh, I would begin with setting priorities. The, my answer is yes. And, and that yes goes with setting priorities, setting targets for both work and study. Mm -hmm. So that depending on the nature of tasks I have, I would decide how to distribute my time. So, for example, there are days at school when I don't have so much to read and submit. And there are days at work when I have a lot of timelines to meet. So for me, 18 hours is a lot. I can give you an example of a breakdown. Mm -hmm. So I would do six hours of work early morning. And that is serious work because 
sometimes you know you, you can give all the excuses but work is work i would devote six hours very early in the morning and put those into my work then i would break for good four hours four hours to take care of myself if i'm home i need to make lunch i need to check on friends family i need to do a 30 to one hour uh you know jogging jogging activity or jogging exercise then if i feel that i'm tired still within those four hours i would rest for an hour then i would wake up and do three to five hours of study in the evening because i know that when it comes to studying i study mostly in the evening that's when my brain can take in new content then if i have news to watch i would do that watch some news and then sleep but again i have mastered this time division within my mind uh, but it depends on the day the tasks i have to finish and the energy i have on that day determine how i distribute my time across all these uh, activities that i would have mm -hmm. okay yeah. so it's it's if, if I, I can i can if i say if i can say something is that it's about knowing first of all your task what do you have to do in your day, having the, the task um, on a list and prioritizing them, giving time according to a priority. Mm -hmm. Yes. True. Okay, cool. Um, so, and now with, with the world is, is, is uh, the, we have the COVID-19 outbreak, and most in tertiary institutions have transitioned to online classes. And you know, with online classes, uh, most of the students, this is a new experience for them. They, most of the class online learning, they are self-paced, which means this this assignment or uh, classmates, you know, who can remind you, so you are on your own. And I would like to know as a faculty member, how do you ensure that your students are not caught in in a cycle of procrastination but because this is very easy when you're alone and mm -hmm. self how do you ensure that your students are not caught in a cycle of procrastination so thank you very much um i don't i, I don't think we are pure yet purely in a 100 percent online system although we say we are you know we might say that schools have gone online i don't believe that they are 100% yet online education systems. But I will, ag but for my students, what I do, we agree on timelines together whenever possible. Mm -hmm. So I try to give flexible timelines when necessary. I encourage my students to share whatever they have, whatever work they have for feedback. That's how we progress. Because many times students will say it's a lonely journey. Yes, if it's a lonely journey, if you don't have somebody to work with you give you feedback hey this is what you're doing well this is what you need to improve so you don't have for me you don't have to complete the whole assignment for me to look at it i can give you feedback to support you as you progress so i also give my students the results of you know accomplishing their tasks or not accomplishing their tasks it's simple i add a grade on every assignment whether you submit or not you will get a grade that represents your contribution. So this in some ways encourages you to know, okay, um, I, I don't have a grade, I have a grade and it's not a good grade now. But Stanley is available and he's willing to listen to me. So I can give him what I have, he gives me feedback and, and then I can be able to uh, you know, progress letting him know. So for me, it's about encouraging my students to take their schooling jobs seriously mm -hmm. because you need to be serious about your job there is no longer space for you know for mediocrity or for are uh, you being able to not uh, not to accomplish the task the world is becoming very competitive so i i encourage them to take this job very seriously mm -hmm. thank, you yeah. thank you stanley uh I can put myself in the students in the student sure when someone is encouraging you to submit uh, to submit what you have and you know it's it's really encouraging I can put myself in the in the student shirt yeah mm -hmm. so um, I would like to know what is what what other challenges did you face with being a student and a full-time employee 
and how did you overcome uh, those challenges? So, um, well, that's an interesting question because um, online learning is sometimes a lonely journey. That is the truth. And if you don't have a very supportive system, it becomes a little bit of challenge. But one thing that I want to say is that one of the challenges I've met, there are about two or three. One was balancing my work, study, and personal life. Three things again. It was to, it was hard to balance my personal well-being, which included my physical and mental health. And then I sometimes fall, found myself overstressing my brain and body. Like you, you're oversitting, for example, and I feel like my brain is being consumed so much. So the other challenge I faced was energy management. How do I divide my brain or my energy or my physical energy between work, study, and my own life or my own social life? Those have been very big challenges because you want to socialize with people. You also want to make sure that you have enough time to study. But you need to be able to meet your timelines at work because you want to get paid and be able to pay a tuition. So another challenge I had is that which is related to some of to socialization. And I had to give up some of a certain percentage of my social interaction, which was painful. But then I have learned how to manage all these challenges in the following ways I'm going to talk about, because I have developed a number of habits. Uh, for example, physical exercises two to three times a week of jogging. I need to jog because that is what keeps my energy levels up. It keeps my body working physically energetic and my brain healthy so i also need to maintain uh, a work study a, a work schedule like i respect my work schedule very very much because i know i cannot only study without a job and then i also reach out to friends as many times as i can during times when i'm not studying during times when i feel like i'm down mm. especially to, to you know to tell them what i'm working on what my progress is. So my friends are more like accountability partners. I do that through phone calls tech, and text messages. So for social interaction, like social media, I know as young people, you want to socialize with so many people on social media. So I have prioritized Twitter as my main social media for focus, because I understood that the time I was spending on Facebook, the time I was spending are spending on uh, many WhatsApp uh, conversations, many Instagram chats and what, we're not really paying so much back to me, but that's that cannot apply to everybody. What I'm just trying to say here is even interactions, social interactions need some level of understanding and prioritization. So you prioritize your social interactions. Like what is what is the biggest platform that allows me to connect with the right people that matter to me? So for me, that's Twitter. Maybe for another person, they could choose WhatsApp only or WhatsApp with Instagram or Facebook. So those are some of the habits that I've learned to deal with the challenges that I've mentioned. My challenges were balancing work, study, and my personal life, where, where energy management, where having a lonely experience in studies, and, I've, and that's how I've dealt with it through the, chat, through the solutions or the uh, strategies I've told you about physical exercises, scheduling and respecting my job, prioritizing my social interactions and reaching out to as many friends and family as possible whenever I can. Thank you, Stanley. Uh, thank you, Stanley. Uh, I would like to, would you please uh, elaborate more on the energy management? How can someone, like, how can someone uh, manage his energy? Very interesting question because I understand for example that many times you will sit down for two hours and you will and you will end up not doing anything and you will complain about time management and you say I didn't have enough time challenge wasn't time it was about your energy so energy is the motivation it, it, it has an element to do with motivation and concentration when do you concentrate better is it in the morning is it in the afternoon like do you have two uh two moments of concentration or two periods within a day or three it depends on the individual but energy management is about understanding when you are effective and 
you will do all the tasks that require you to use your brain during that time when you know that this is when my brain is working best. I can use my example. I know that I read best in the evening and I know that my work, because I give it a lot of priority, I need to do it in the morning. So my brain works around that. My energy in the morning, I give it to work because I know in the morning, my brain is, you know, is working very well. And during, and during the day there from the afternoon, you know, from the afternoon around 2, 3 p.m. to somewhere around 6 p.m. If I am working from home like this, I would do things that don't require my brain to work very hard and also do things that will revamp my energy. Like I talked about uh, jogging, reaching out to friends, and that will bring back all my energy so that I'm able now to do some good work three to five hours in the in the uh, in the evening for some for some people their energy management is through physical exercises and rest so you need to understand how you're managing your energy but the most important thing in energy management i've learned is taking care of my physical health and mental health you also need to let your friends and colleagues at work know that hey guys you know what this is when i'm really productive i know there are students who don't have jobs Right. And I know there are students who have jobs and at the same time they are studying. But also being honest and open with your team and say, okay, this is when I'm most productive, but then I need to respect my job. So I will come in and do everything that requires me to do a very good job. But then for my studies, I need to find, I want to call it a sweet spot of your brain that, you know, within your schedule that allows your brain to do a very good job maybe you need to sleep for three hours maybe you need to sleep for two hours because rest for some people revamps their energy it increases their energy and for me that's different i cannot only rest i also need to run and also rest so there are two things for me for other people it's two things for other people it's just social interaction they reach out to friends they talk they laugh they go out with friends, they have fun, and their energy levels are up. So we are different, as you said, you can't do it the way I'm doing it exactly, but it, re it requires an understanding. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Stanley. So uh, I would like to know if you could make one rule that everyone should follow to be better at time management, what will it be? So thank you very much Ella, for that question. Again, allow me to add some context. As I said, mm -hmm. many times we complain about time, yet time is not the real problem. It's our energy. So there is when we have too much time, but our brains and physical energy is so low, we fail to accomplish so much with a lot of time. But there's when, there's a moment where you have very little time and then you accomplish so much because you you know, you, you, that's, you have a lot of energy. You feel that excitement within you about this work. So if you can't manage your time well, then your energy would be spent on things that don't require a lot of energy or concentration and time. So my rule is effective time management is the same as deciding how you want to spend your time and energy. Mm -hmm. I'm adding energy there because you need to distribute your energy levels among all the tasks that you have to accomplish at the time you have decided. So I think uh, this also refers to the, this it will also refer to um, mental health and physical health. Uh, Definitely. There is, there, is, there is a lot to do with, um, you know, uh, taking care of yourself. We very many times forget about ourselves because you know, I have so many assignments to submit because I'm a student and uh, I'm really scared that I need to do and perform very well because I need to have a very good job and good grades. Yes, that's important. But your health, your physical well being, and your mental well being are very, very important above everything because if you're not alive, if you're not healthy physically and mentally, then you cannot do a good job, even if you're given, you know, the whole day, 24 hours in a day to be awake, you wouldn't do anything. So it's very important to uh, distribute your time 
uh, among all these things but of, of course understanding what's important for me if i'm making a schedule my physical well-being will be part of that schedule physical and mental well-being will be part of that among all the, the, the tasks i have to do for work and school mm -hmm. thank you yeah. thank you thank you so much uh one last question uh, uh if you, you know there are people say um i'm I know I'm 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 not good in time management, and you know this is how I've gone with. So, what would you tell someone who thinks like that? Who thinks that being a good time manager is something that you are born with? Thank you very much. Uh, that's also a very interesting question because, for me, I know that there is no universal formula to time management. What works for me might not work for you. Again, it goes back to self understanding you need to understand yourself but i know that with practice everyone can learn how to set priorities everyone can learn how to create a schedule that manages their time and energy so i know and i want to say emphasize this that everyone has the potential to manage time effectively you don't have to be born with that skill it's a skill you that takes practice right but if you understand your energy levels and appreciate what sparks that energy, then you can be able to manage time very, very well. These are things that, you know, we tend to minimize, to underestimate. You're underestimating the power that comes with you taking care of your body, you taking care of your physical well-being and your mind or your brain. It needs to feed, it needs to rest, it needs to interact. Uh, so if that is not happening, even if you were born with all the qualities of skills people are born with, you can't do a very good job. So uh, there is no universal formula for time management. Everybody can learn how to become a, a very good time manager if they also understand when their energy levels are high so that they can maximize working times when their brains and bodies feel you know, that excitement for work, appreciate it, and you know find ways to spark that energy within you does it mean listening to a song does it mean watching a movie for some people because if you have 18 hours as you said and you're spending two hours to feed your body and to feed your brain your physical well-being that doesn't have any problem so yes uh, there's no formula everybody can get better at setting priorities creating schedules time management and energy management Thank you so much, Tony. So, uh, if I can summarize your answer, everyone has the potential, and the potential um, can be the can can be developed, and it's it's a matter of willingness, it's a matter of mindset, it's a matter mm -hmm. of also commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, you need to commit. You need to commit to you know. Um, making sure that you can be able to uh, achieve your priorities, set priorities, set targets. That's another thing that really, really is important. Set targets for yourself. Have an accountability partner. Your accountability partner could be your parent, could be, uh, you know, um, could be a close friend, could be a classmate, could be your facilitator or your instructor. You know, that is the person who you would feel accountable to. Like, I usually set goals for myself. I had an accountability partner, but at some point I felt like I had grown enough to move forward myself. So it depends, like you need somebody who you can always report to, share your frustrations with, somebody who can, you know, pat you on the back and say, hey, Ella, you're doing great, please move forward. Uh, you know, challenges are there. And as we said, online learning for some people, it's a, long, it's a lonely journey. But I'm really happy that universities here in Rwanda are not yet 100% online, although we think they are. Because you still have a schedule for school. You know that there is time for me to be in a discussion at this point. You know that there is time for me to submit an assignment. In some, you know, in some online education programs, like the ones that have gone through, they are self-paced. You're the one who sets your goal. You're the one who decides when to submit and not to submit. So I really want to encourage everybody to have a focus, have a goal, uh, but then as you're having goals, set priorities, 
have an accountability partner uh, and then also personally take care of yourself uh, physical and mental well-being also um, you know learn what sparks your energy and when you're very effective so that's that's what i can say yeah thank you so much thank you so much tamne thank you so much and that was that's all great insights and advice and i hope the audience will make it in practice because it's good to listen it's good to get wisdom it's good to get advice but the main things that are very important is to put them in practice and these are very great insights and tips on how you can effectively manage your time with online learning it's yes it's on it's lonely it can be lonely but you can make it with commitment and also prioritizing and taking care of yourself and knowing knowing where when your energy is is up and maximizing that time yeah, thank you so much sande for your time it was it, yeah it was really great having you um mm-hmm. thank you so much thank you so much ella for the invitation i really uh, appreciate everybody that uh, would find this uh, information meaningful thank you so much for the students i wish you the very best in your education thank you so much chancen for what you're doing uh, to support all the students in africa and the great work you're doing to make sure that you know education access uh, is equitable to everybody out there uh, to all the students that have uh, these big dreams So I really appreciate everything um uh, and and most especially inviting me for this conversation. I know there are so many people but uh you <laughs> selecting me for this kind of conversation is quite a very humbling pleasure. And all the social media uh engagement that has gone on, I really appreciate it. I encourage all the students to uh you know um look at the advice I've given if there's something that makes sense for them. they should go with it if there is something that doesn't work for them they can leave it out i wish you all the best thank you very much thank you so much stanley